Hi everyone, welcome to the first edition of my new garden series, Getting Ready for Spring. Because I live in California Zone 9B, I know that spring is going to be here before I know it. So my plan for this series is to complete all the different garden chores on my list before it arrives. In today's video, I'm going to start by pruning back my roses and cleaning out all the rose beds. And while I'm working, I'm also going to include some helpful tips and information for your garden too. So let's get started. Alrighty, let the pruning and cleanup begin. I got my 99 cent pruners in my hand and I am ready to tackle this job today. The reason why I'm doing this chore first is because honestly, it's my least favorite of all. I do this every single year and I do not enjoy it. However, when this job is done, it is the most rewarding. So I know this will be so awesome once I get it done. But here's my first tip of the day. Never, never, never buy a pruner from the 99 cent store. This thing is pure garbage. You know, I heard that the seeds and the bulbs at the dollar store are really good. So like a dummy, I said, well, let me just try the pruner. If it doesn't work out, I only wasted a dollar. And I really, really think the only thing this piece of crap is good for is cutting grass. Oh well, live and learn, right? And in the garbage you go. Okay, now that I got those out of the way, back to the roses. So, the reason why we want to prune our roses is because pruning removes dead and diseased canes and it keeps the plant healthy for the next season. It also triggers new buds to push out at the base of the plant so that new vigorous canes can form. It's kind of like giving your plant a fresh new start and the best time to prune your roses are in late winter or early spring. It really depends on your own garden zone, but the simplest way to know when to do this is as soon as you see new growth popping up, then it's time to prune. Okay, so which branches or canes, if that's what you want to call them, should you remove? Well, first you want to start with the obvious. Remove all the broken, dead, and diseased wood first. And you'll also want to remove any crossing canes. Basically those branches when they rub against each other, it causes damage, it encourages disease, and it just doesn't make the plant look very good. And you always want to make your cuts at a 45 degree angle, right above an emerging bud. The angle prevents water damage and disease. Okay, now I want to talk to you about suckers, how and why you should remove them. Sucker canes are undesirable growths that originate from the ground level or from below the crown of the rose. They're pretty easy to remove. All you have to do is step right down at the base and they usually snap right off because they're so weak. However, if you have one that's a little difficult, just move all the dirt away from the ground and use your pruners and snip it off as close to the crown as you can get. Now the reason why you want to remove the suckers is because if they're allowed to develop, they actually grow as long arching canes. They look absolutely ridiculous and they have way more vigor than the whole rose bush itself. And if they aren't removed, they will eventually take over the whole rose plant. And the flowers will look very different too because the suckers are growing up from the, the, um, the crown. Especially if you have a hybrid tea rose, the flowers might be a whole different color. Definitely not the same as the whole rose that you purchased. So that's why you want to remove them. So the problem I'm running into with this rose is, do you see how these canes are crossing? Oh, th this just made the decision for me. You always, you always want to remove one of the canes because you want the rose to always have good air circulation. So sometimes you do have to sacrifice a cane. So I suggest you just pull on them in a little bit. And look, this one just came right out. So that was an easy decision to make. Okay, here's another example of a crossing cane. This one shouldn't be here. 
because what's going to happen is when all the buds start to form and all the foliage grows, there's going to be so much mass down here and it's not good for airflow and circulation. So this one has to come out. So if you are new to roses and think that roses are just too much trouble to deal with in your garden, don't be overwhelmed or intimidated by all this information and quote unquote rules to pruning. Roses are actually very forgiving and the only way you will ever learn is by just going for it. I don't always know what I'm doing, but I do it anyway. Here's a little tip that I find very helpful. When it's time to clean up all the canes, whether you wear gloves or not, never use your hands. Even with gloves on, sometimes they'll stick in the thorns. I just use my pruners and use it like a claw. So far so good. Now that I got all the rose bushes pruned, it's time to remove the stepping stones and rake out all the dead leaves and debris.
Okay, everything looks really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dig a little mode around each base of the rose. So that way when I water and fertilize them, the water will stay close to the roots instead of traveling through to the sidewalk. It's super easy, let me show you how it's done. So all the moats are done and the next step will be to fertilize them. However, I'm not going to fertilize the roses just yet. I'm going to wait till the new growth is at least six inches long. The reason why I'm not going to fertilize them now is because I don't want to stimulate flower production. I kind of want to let mother nature take its course and let the roses rest because right now they're in a dormancy stage. I'm going to let them wake up on their own. And then as soon as the new growth is about six inches long, then I will start feeding them. And as you can see, it won't be long. Well, I hope you found this video fun and helpful. Thanks for watching.